Okay, so welcome everybody. I will add more people into the group as they show up if they do, but let's get started. Um, it's really good to kind of read through those messages and see where everybody's coming from. People are just sharing in the chat where they're coming from and what their experience with meditation is. And so um, for the first part of the class, I'm just going to be introducing myself and sharing a little bit of my vision for this class. And then we'll kind of go into about a 30 minute time period where I will lead you through some meditation practices. And then at the end, there will be about 15 minutes that I'll leave time for questions and for us to kind of talk through um, the various strategies that we worked on and any questions that you have. So I will um, offer time for you to give some feedback throughout it, but we'll save questions for the last 15 minutes. So Welcome, my name is Esther Smith. For those of you who don't know me, I'm just gonna share a little bit about myself. I won't do this for every class, but just for this first class, I just wanna spend a little bit more time letting you know who I am and how I envision, envision this class to work. Um, so I am a counselor. I am a licensed counselor in the state of Maryland. I live near Baltimore and um, I am licensed here and I am also trained in biblical counseling. So for the past, I've been counseling for about nine years. And during that time, I've done a lot of biblical counseling. So I have training through the Christian Counseling and Educational Foundation and have been working um, in biblical counseling settings during that time. So I really like to bring together this, the clinical aspect that I kind of learned through getting licensed and also that um, biblical aspect that I have, you know, really taken the time to incorporate into my practice in which you'll kind of experience a lot of that as we move forward today. So I am a counselor, but I also am like most of you here in that I personally experience chronic illness and chronic pain. Um, so I have dealt with chronic back pain um, for about the last 10 years. And I won't go into my whole story, but um, I was injured by a chiropractor at one point and that led to a whole bunch of problems. And then more recently I was diagnosed with lupus. Um, and so I do have some autoimmune stuff going on and um, I, that I've dealt with for quite a long period of time, but wasn't diagnosed with until recently. So I'm kind of coming from both of those perspectives of I'm a counselor, I teach meditation practices to the people that I counsel, um, but I'm also somebody who lives with chronic pain. And so I use these practices myself. So everything that I'm going to teach you, I use this myself. And that's, um, that's something that's really important to me is that when I offer stuff to people, that it be things that I really feel like works because I've been able to incorporate it into my own life. Um, so actually the idea for this class came probably a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, and I was awake in the middle of night in pain, as I'm sure many of you can relate to that. And I just kind of started doing some of these meditation practices that I've learned over the years. And these are my go-to practices that I have learned through apps, through other counselors, even, you know, some things that I've learned from people that I have counseled. And I just thought to myself, you know what, these actually really, really help me. Sometimes they help me fall back asleep. Other times they just help me feel calmer when I'm, you know, up for a long period of time because I'm in pain. And it kind of gave me this idea of, you know, I'd really like to offer these strategies to other people. And that's kind of where I got the idea for this class. And so really there's two reasons that I want to offer this class and two things, two ways I think it's going to benefit people. Um, so the one is that I want to teach you techniques. Um, you know, that was, I think, really clear when you signed up is that that's my goal is to teach you some techniques, um, things like scripture meditation, breathing, different coping skills, guided prayer. And some of them are going to be strategies that maybe you haven't heard of before um, and you'll be learning something new. But really, and if you follow me on Instagram, I kind of did a short video on this. My main reason for wanting to do this class is not to teach you fancy techniques and strategies. 
My main reason is because I want to offer a place where there is accountability and help and space for you to practice strategies that are really difficult to practice on your own. Um, so it's very likely that, you know, somebody has told you before that deep breathing is really helpful. And so go home and try deep breathing. And that's really true. Um, but how many people actually hear that deep breathing is helpful and then go home and practice it all the time? Like most people don't. Um, and I think that that's because we really need someone to like sit down with us and hold us accountable and say, okay, every week or every other week, I'm going to really practice this and it's going to become really incorporated into my life and I'm going to be able to use it all the time. And that's really honestly the main reason I want to offer this class because yes, there'll be new strategies, but mostly I want to offer you some really simple strategies where we come together and we actually take the time. You set aside this 45 minutes or however long it is out of your week to come and say, this is, this is my time to take care of myself and to do this meditation and to, to kind of help me with that. So I just kind of wanted to share that for you as my um, vision for the class. Um, I don't know all the details of what the class is going to look like um, in terms of I will either offer it probably weekly or every other week. I'm not sure yet. We'll see kind of what people's interest is. Um, for now, the classes are going to be on Fridays. Um, so this class is completely free. I just want to offer it to you. And I think it's going to be really helpful as standalone, even just coming to this class. Um, but for the future classes, I will be charging a very small fee. It won't be much, but there will be a small fee. And people will be able to sign up for each class separately. So you know, if there's a week you can't come, you don't have to sign up for that. And I'm always going to leave the option that if you can't make the live time for whatever reason, um, you have something scheduled or you have a pain flare and all of a sudden you're like, I can't make it that day, then I'm always going to be sending the recording out. And this recording will be available forever. Um, but future recordings will be available for one week. So I will send it out. You'll be able to watch them for one week, unlimited amounts of times. And that's kind of, um, I just wanted to be able to offer that backup plan for, you know, people who might not be able to come for the live, for the live class. Um, so, and I will say at the very end of this class, I'm going to be putting a survey into the chat just to kind of get your thoughts on how often would you be interested in it? Um, what do you think would be a fair price? And everybody who fills out that survey, I'm going to be sending them a free copy of my booklet on expressive writing for chronic illness and chronic pain, because I really want your feedback. I really want to hear what you think. So I will send that out to um, everybody who fills out that survey. So stay tuned for that link at the end. Okay, so I'm almost, I'm almost done with all this housekeeping stuff. And then we will actually get into the, um, the, the meditation part of this. So I just want to make sure that, um, that everybody kind of feels comfortable to take everything at your own pace. So meditation can be difficult. Um, it can be a struggle to do some of the things that we'll go through. If you have, um, you know, if you're in severe levels of pain, there are certain things where like, I might ask you to draw your attention to your body um, or to something else. And that can be really difficult. Um, if you have a, a history of trauma, which many of us who deal with chronic pain, there's trauma integrated into, you know, bad treatments that we've had, bad surgery, stuff like that. A lot of us have experienced trauma. Um, and so different types of meditation can be difficult if you have experienced trauma. So I just want to throw that out there and say that um, I'm doing everything that I can to make sure that this is a trauma-informed class, um, which means that I'm, I'm just very careful how I present everything to make sure it's not going to be triggering for people. But that being said, like if something is too much for you, like feel free to just observe. You don't have to practice right now um, or feel free to practice for a shorter period of time than everybody else and just take things at your own pace. Um, go slowly, be gentle with yourself. Just allow yourself to have whatever you need, okay? 
<laughs> Sound good? Any questions? Most questions I'm going to say for the end, but any pressing questions that you feel like we need to address before we jump into the actual meditation practice form of this? Okay. Okay, so the actual meditation time is going to be about 30 minutes. So I just kind of want to give you that heads up um, that that's about how much time we will be taking for that. And again, I just want to reiterate that some of these are going to be really simple, um, basic strategies. And we're just going to practice them together and see how they can help us feel a little bit calmer. Okay, so I'm seeing a little, some questions coming in. Um, and so I will, someone is asking about physical posture, and I will be definitely giving instructions on that as we keep going. Um, someone else is asking about the definition of meditation. And let's actually come back to that question towards towards the end. So I will have about 15 minutes at the end for us to ask questions and let's come back to that then. Um, okay, so we're just gonna start with some deep breathing and do a really simple deep breathing exercise. So go ahead and in terms of that physical posture question, you can feel free to be in whatever posture is comfortable for you. So. Um, you can be seated. Um, if you're seated, you probably want to put your feet flat on the ground. Um, it's totally fine if you need to lie down, if you need to recline, but just allow yourself to um, be in a position that feels comfortable to you right now. And, and actually, to be honest, lying down is really great for deep breathing because it helps you get in some of those deep diaphragmatic breaths um, that I'm going to teach you in a second. It's easier to actually do that when you're lying down. So if you're lying down, that is totally fine. Um, but go ahead and just start by taking in a deep breath through your nose and letting it out through your mouth. And keep breathing in that way, breathing in deeply through your nose and letting it out very slowly through your mouth. And just do that about three or four times. And each time you take in that breath, you're just going to feel yourself lift a little bit. And as you breathe it out, just feel your body really settle into the chair or the couch or the bed or wherever it is that you are. Just notice what happens to your body as you take in those deep breaths. Notice what happens to your thoughts, what happens to your emotions. Okay, so go ahead and just pause for a second and we're going to talk about what it means to take in a deep diaphragmatic breath. It's just like a deeper breath into your stomach. And so the way I like to teach this to people is go ahead and if you feel comfortable, you can just put one hand on your chest and one hand on your stomach. And your goal is you want to breathe, take that deep breath in through your nose. You want it to, to, to enter into your stomach. So you want your stomach to expand and you want your chest to not. So as you take in this next breath, see if you can breathe into your stomach so that the hand on your stomach moves and the hand on your chest stays still. So you know you're doing it right, taking it into your stomach if that's what happened. And this hand on your chest stays still. Go ahead and just take in a couple deep breaths in that way. Just pause again and notice how you feel. Notice how your body feels. Notice if you feel a little bit calmer, if you're sinking more into your chair with each breath. Take in a couple more breaths like that. Okay. 
Okay, so we're gonna add some scripture meditation while you breathe. So this next time you take in a breath through your nose, remind yourself to be still. And as you breathe out through your mouth, remind yourself and know that I am God. So breathe in, be still, and breathe out and know that I am God. I am God. And you're just going to do that about 10 times. I'm going to give you some time to do that and just settle into that meditation of be still as you breathe in and know that I am God as you breathe out. So about 10 times. Okay, go ahead and pause for a second. And so I just wanna illustrate for a second to you how helpful this can actually be when you're in a moment of feeling stressed. So we're gonna do a little exercise to, to demonstrate that for you. So go ahead and think back on just the past couple of days and think about something mildly stressful that happened over the last couple of days. So nothing, don't bring up anything traumatic. Don't bring up anything, you know, terrible that happens. Just think of something mildly stressful um, and a, a specific incident. So it could have been like you lost your keys or you um, had a little argument with somebody, but identify a specific situation and just remember what happened. So remember who was there, what you were thinking, what you were feeling, and what was going on in that moment. I'm just gonna give you a second to sit with that. And just notice what happens to your body as you do that, as you sit with that kind of stressful event. Does your body feel a little bit tenser? You feeling a little bit activated or a little stressed as you think back on it? So sit with that for a second. Okay, and now we're gonna switch. We're gonna go back to the deep breathing while meditating on scripture. So go ahead and start doing the breathing in, be still, and breathing out and know that I am God. And go ahead and do that about five times. Okay, and, and take a second again to see what you notice. What happened to your body again? What happened to your thoughts? Did it pull you out of that stressful event? Did it help you kind of move through that stress or what happened? And just notice for a second. And I'm actually kind of curious to hear a couple people's feedback on how that went for you. So um, does anybody want to share their experience of what that was like for them? Um, you can put it in the chat if you want, but you're also welcome to unmute yourself and, and share with everybody if, if you would like to. I'll, I'll share. Um, I just had a hard time with the and my breathing in, and my breathing right, and breathing out, and my breathing the way I'm supposed to, you know, with my tummy. Or so it was. It's kind of confusing for me. Mm, okay. Yeah. Anybody else find it confusing? Okay. 
Do I see a thumbs up from Katie? Did you also find it confusing, Katie? Well, I guess what I found was it was causing me a little bit more stress concentrating on, am I breathing correctly? Mm. I know I am breathing correctly, but then put it in this context, it's like, am I still breathing correctly? So I'll just share that for myself. No, I appreciate that feedback. I definitely appreciate it. Yeah. Um, what do you think would help with that? Do you think it was the the instruction to like breathe into your stomach? Was that just like too much to concentrate on right now? If you don't, and if you don't want to share, that's okay. But I'm just kind of curious. Well, I guess I have to kind of back up and say for someone who tends to be rather perfectionistic then and working from sometimes working from a framework of trying to be a pleaser that that is kind of built into my nature so then in a setting like this even though I know this is supposed to be a helpful situation and then having maybe having had some times with physical therapy where I think I'm doing things correctly and I'm not doing things correctly and not really had anybody uh, take the time to say, okay, let's stop and let's practice how to do this correctly. I think that brought up some memories for me of some very recent PT experiences. Yeah, that makes a lot of that makes a lot of sense, and I really appreciate you sharing that. And I'm sure you're not the only one who feels that way, or who kind of had that experience of like it bringing up stuff, or this is like a little bit challenging. Um, and you know, some of that is practice. Some of it is just not being as like, you know, not being hard on ourselves as we do meditation, because, you know, going back to what I said before, like meditation can be difficult. It can be, um, it can bring up physical pain, more physical pain for people at times, just as, you know, as you're, as you're learning how to do it, um, it can bring up those perfectionistic tendencies that you talked about. And so a lot of this is feeling out, figuring out what works for me, right? So we go through like a, a a variety of different strategies. And I will, you know, we'll go through different ones today and in and, and future classes, but not every single strategy is going to work for somebody, for, for people, for every single person. And sometimes it's a matter of figuring out like how to tweak it so that it's right for you. So I, I really appreciate that feedback. And let's actually- Can I interject? Let, Can I... Yes, yes, go uh, ahead. So I really- you know, I'm like a total YouTube freak. And I, I really like, um, you know, guided meditation, because then somebody is is helping you to meditate, you know, you don't, it, your breath will come naturally, as you listen to the person's voice. Um, I, I find um, and that you, you don't have to worry too much about your breath. Um, I, I just place my hand on my tummy and I just, I just listen to the person's voice and it's, it's like having kind of like a best friend guide you into relaxation um, where other meditations where if it's just music and nobody, there's no voice there, um, then it might be a little bit more hard in the beginning, you know? So anyways, mm -hmm. that's my input. Um, as yeah. long as it's not, you know, weird, you know, I'm, I'm into discernment. So I don't, you know, I, I try to just stick to meditation. That's not, uh, I don't know, too weird, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> just real yeah. quickly, I noticed in the chat comment about the person with pelvic pain, which is also an issue for me. That's so me. that okay. is a combination there as well with, with, the pelvic pain, sometimes that diaphragmatic breathing is not easy. Yeah, exactly. Because it really, yeah, because your pelvic floor, yep, is affected by the, the, the real intense diaphragmatic breathing toward the bottom where your tummy is, you know. Yeah. And what I would say with that is that might mean starting out with not quite as deep breaths. You know, I'm not 
and, and that's something that more like even a physical therapist, I think can be helpful in figuring out some of those breathing patterns that would be most helpful um, for you, depending on like how it's affecting your pain. But I do think that some of it starts with maybe taking not quite as deep breaths. Um, and like, like I said before, like figuring out some of what works specifically for you. So someone here was saying, Terry was saying that she, um, would focus on the breath going in her nose and out. And that's another way to do it. We're actually going to um, move into that in a second in terms of a different type of breathing that people can do. Um, but yeah, it, it can be challenging to figure out like how to do these strategies in a way um, that works for you specifically. So, um, you know, that's part of part of what we're, we're figuring out, I think. And, um, I would say that like the deep breathing is, is not necessarily wouldn't ne would not necessarily call that meditation. It's more of like a, hopefully calming your body down. Um, but going back to the whole issue of trauma, sometimes breathing deeply can actually be triggering for people. And so that's why I really want to, you know, go back to that caveat of be gentle with yourself um, and go at your own pace. If something feels triggering for you or unhelpful for you, it's okay to just observe or to do it a little bit differently in a way that, you know, works for you or, you know, asking questions of how can I do this? So um, hopefully that, that kind of makes sense, but let's, let's actually move into doing, focusing on the breathing in a slightly different way. So before we were taking in um, the deep breaths and I'm, I'm still looking through the comments and it looks like, you know, for some of you that was really calming um, and that, you know, thinking about the stressful situation brought up some stuff, but then, you know, feeling peace when doing deep breathing or seeing how it calms your body um, and your thoughts. So that, I mean, that's, it's, it's really helpful to see, to hear people's different experiences that for some of you, like that was hard and it actually wasn't calming, but for others of you, um, it, you know, was more calming. And so again, what works for you specifically and, and let's work to kind of, to kind of figure that out. Um, so let's switch gears a little bit and think about breathing in a slightly different way. Um, so this, what we're about to do is a little bit, and I'm going to mute everybody again. You can unmute yourself, but there were a couple of people. I just want to make sure there's not feedback. So um, let's think about breathing in a slightly different way. And this what we're going to move into is more along the lines of a mindfulness type of meditation. Um, so mindfulness meditation, and one of the things that I encourage you to do if you are interested in learning more about that is to work with apps. That's really how um, I have learned how to do mindfulness is specifically using the Calm app and to... Um, just practice what it looks like to notice your experience and specifically one really common way to practice mindfulness meditation is to notice your breath. So you can think of mindfulness really as just paying attention. It is the opposite of dissociating from your experience. So dissociating or detaching or disconnecting from your experience, which is really easy for us to do when we are in a lot of pain. And actually sometimes we, we need that. Like sometimes we need to like detach a little bit um, because the pain is so intense and we kind of need that break. Um, but then there's this other side of it, this mindfulness of paying attention to our experience that I think that we need as well. And so we're going to practice that a little bit um, today. And the very simplest way to do it is just to notice what it feels like as you breathe in and as you breathe out. So we're just going to try that right now. And um, So this is the way this is a little bit different than the deep diaphragmatic breathing is that you're not going to change your breath in any way. You're just going to let yourself breathe naturally 
And you're just going to, if you want, you can close your eyes. It's up to you. Um, some people feel, feel more comfortable with that and other people do not. So I invite you to close your eyes if you would like, but to not feel any pressure to do that. And you're just going to pay attention to what it feels like as you breathe in and as you breathe out. And one way to do that is to notice where your breath feels the strongest. So you might feel your breath the strongest in your chest. You might feel it the strongest in your stomach. You might feel like a change of temperature in your nostrils as you breathe in. Just kind of feel that air flowing in through your nose. You might feel it the strongest as you let the air out, but just kind of identify where that is for you. Where do you feel this, the breath the strongest? And go ahead and just notice that. And as you do, you're, you're definitely going to want to drift to other thoughts. So naturally other thoughts are gonna come in um, and that's totally fine. If that happens, just notice those thoughts and gently come back to what it feels like to breathe in and to breathe out. And I'm just gonna give you about 30 seconds to try to do that. And again, you're gonna notice your mind wander and that's totally fine. Every time it does, just bring your attention back to your breath. So about 30 seconds and see what that's like for you. Okay, if your attention has wandered, that's fine. That's no problem. See if you can bring it back to your breath again. Just notice what it feels like. Notice again where you feel your breath the strongest. And the goal is not necessarily to, you know, have this hyper focus on your breath, you know, kind of going back to that comment about the perfectionism, you know, and wanting to do it exactly right. So the goal is not necessarily to do this exactly right. It's just to, you know, over time become more practiced in noticing when your thoughts drift and bringing them back again. Okay, so to kind of close that out, go ahead and if it feels comfortable for you, take in a breath, a deep breath through your nose and out through your mouth and go ahead and open your eyes and you can come back to the room. Okay, so because of time, I'm just going to immediately go into the last thing I had planned for today, and then we'll kind of do feedback on both of them at the same time. But I do just want to get this last one in because I think that it can be really helpful and, and really calming. Um, so I just kind of want to end on this note, and then we'll have time for feedback and questions at the end. Okay, so we're going to do something called butterfly hugs, and it is a form of tapping um, that can be really calming on the body. So I'm going to show you one way to do it, and then I'm going to give you an alternative way if this first way is um, difficult for, um, you know, whatever type of pain you deal with. But I'll, so I'll show you a couple different options that you can choose from depending on, you know, if it ends up being painful for you. Um, but to start, um, if you're able, you're just going to kind of link your thumbs like this and place your hands on your chest. And then you're just going to start tapping like this. 
and go ahead and do it at a pace that feels comfortable and calming to you. So some people like to do it fast. Other people like to do it really slow. Just go at a speed that feels good to you. And again, if you want, you can close your eyes or you can keep them open and whatever feels comfortable. Now, if this is painful for you, you can, and, and if it's not, you can keep going like this. But if it is painful for you, um, what you can do instead is you want there to be tapping on both sides of your body. So you can just take your hands and place them. And I'm not going to be able to show it, actually show it to you, but you can just place your hands on your thighs and um, not have to cross them. I know that this can be painful for some people to cross or to hold your arms up. So you can just relax your arms down onto your legs and tap one leg after the other. Hopefully that makes sense. Just right on top of your thighs, you can do it on your hips or on the side of your legs. Um, or if, you know, if that doesn't work for you, you can find anywhere on your body. You just want there to be tapping on both sides of the body, um, wherever it happens to be. And just again, you know, I'm going to say this over and over and over again, just notice what happens when you do that. Notice what happens to your body. And, um, you know, one thing I will say is that it's different for different people. So you're not looking for, oh my goodness, did my body calm down? Oh my goodness, like, is there like some right response? You're just noticing because, you know, meditation is something that we, or meditation and these other coping skills that we practice are things that we practice over time and affect us in different ways um, at different times. And so you're just, you're just noticing how it affects you when you do that. Um, and go ahead and keep tapping in that way if you're able to, if it's comfortable for you. And while you do, go ahead and just listen. I'm going to read a few um, passages of scripture. Many of them are probably, or some of them at least, will probably be familiar to you. But just go ahead and tap while I read. I'm going to start with Psalm 23. I'm just going to read it slowly. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, I'm going to read it again. And this time I want you to notice if there's any word or phrase or verse that stands out to you, something that maybe just seems to come out in bold print. And just notice if that happens for you, if there's a part of it that, that sticks out in that way. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And if there was a part of it that stuck out to you, I'm just going to give you like 10 to 15 seconds to think in on that one specific part of the psalm. And if you want, you can continue with the tapping. You can keep your eyes closed if you want, but just focus in on the part that stood out to you the most, just for the next 10 to 15 seconds.
Okay, I'm just gonna close with this final passage of scripture. And if you want, you can continue with the tapping if you're finding that to be calming. This is from Corinthians and it says, therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fixed our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. One more time, I'll read that second verse. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Okay, take a second, take in a few breaths if that's helpful for you, a few deep breaths if that's helpful. And slowly, when you're ready, you can open your eyes if they're closed and come back to the room. Okay, how was that for everybody? And again, you can put your thoughts in the comments or if you want, you can um, unmute and kind of share with us. I'd love to share. So yeah. that was really helpful for me because the first exercise, um, you know, it's a, it's a mind game in the sense that I wasn't struggling with the breathing, but I was struggling with the focus because pain would come in and just distract my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so what I just, and I was going to ask you about that, but the tapping I noticed, it's almost like it made my mind focus on a different area of my body. And so I was able to relax and concentrate in a different way. And I also noticed at the beginning, my tapping was like stressful. Like I was like really fast. And then over time, I was able to kind of slow down and then actually think about and fixate on the words. Whereas before I could really only fixate on the pain that was like breaking through. Mm -hmm. So that was really helpful. Thank you. Good. I'm so glad that was helpful. Yeah. So glad. Anybody else have thoughts on how it was? If And it could be that it was helpful. It could be that it wasn't. I'm really very open and curious to hearing, you know, any thoughts on that. Um, hi, Esther. It's Minor. Um, hey. I, I uh, really enjoyed that. I've been doing, doing uh, meditation uh, for a bit through another program I learned. And I, one thing I want to tell everybody who hadn't been doing it, it took me a long time to have it. Like it would take um, like five or six minutes to get into it, to be able to, to really the breath and everything. And, you know, sometimes even longer, but the more I've done it, the sooner I can get into that relaxation. So I just want to encourage people if they're like, didn't feel anything. It's like, I get that. It was like, this is not working. So um, some of us are slower, but the tapping was amazing. I'd kind of forgotten about that. I learned that a long time ago, but that is so calming and yeah. having scripture read into it. It just really kind of, and across the heart, I thought that was cool because it's like pressing it into my heart. So thank you. Yeah. And I really appreciate you sharing like just about how it does take time and it takes practice. Um, to get to the point where some of these things do feel helpful or relaxing because at the beginning there is this feeling of like oh, i'm not doing it right and like my mind keeps drifting and that's really common to feel that way and it is true the more you practice the the sooner that you you know can kind of enter that space of it being calming and relaxing um, and the other thing that i will say is that Sometimes there's other places that you can focus your attention as well. And, you know, today I kind of wanted to get in just a couple like introductory strategies to give you an idea of what the class would be about. But in the future, we would probably just focus more on 
like one thing and then maybe end with the tapping. I really like that. So I, I think that's something I would come back to over and over and over again, but we would probably more just focus on one thing um, and really get into it in more detail because so like with the mindfulness, for example, sometimes focusing on the breath can be difficult if you're dealing with pain because it just, it's, can like draw you into your body. So you're paying more attention to the symptoms and there are other places you can focus your attention on um, that can be more helpful, such as like a noise in the background. Right now I have construction. I don't know if you've been hearing that, but unfortunately there is this construction going on in the other yard. So, you know, focusing in on a noise like that kind of draws your attention away from your body instead of like onto the pain. And so for some people that's more helpful. So I say all that to say is that in future classes, I hope to, like I said, focus more in on one strategy each time and really dig into it and kind of do some problem solving for people um, and, you know, focusing in on it longer to get that practice in. So yeah. Any other feedback or questions, like any other thoughts on how it was for you or just questions in general, either about the class, about meditation, about just just anything that you would be think would be helpful to, to chat about? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I get really hung up on the breathing. How do I, am I breathing right? Am I, is my tummy supposed to be going out or in? And, but I found the tapping exercise so calming. And Good. I could just let go of my breathing and whatever my breathing's doing. But the tapping was really, really calm. But I still have this hang up about the breathing. I don't, mm. I don't know if I'm breathing right, you know? So what I would say is that for now, if you decide to practice the deep breathing, which I do think that over time, as you get into it, it can become calming for people, um, that to maybe just like let go of the whole breathe into your stomach thing, you know, and I would focus more on what does it feel like to take in a bit deeper of a breath than I normally do? What happens when I do that? And how does I, does it feel as I let it out? So I would say like for now, as you're practicing it to just completely let go of, am I doing it right? Mm -hmm. Completely let go of that. And just notice what happens if I take in a slightly deeper breath, I would start there. Thanks. Is that, is that helpful? Yeah, I think so. I think okay. so. Okay. Okay. I'm kind of a perfectionist. So, you know, get it hung up on things. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of us can relate with that. Not the only one. I'm just looking at the questions over here. Okay. So somebody is asking what meditation is and for a definition of that. So I will do my best to kind of give you off the cuff, my, you know, definition of what I think meditation is. Um, so meditation simply means to focus your mind on something and it, it could be anything. So like scripture meditation, you are focusing your mind on scripture. You are dwelling on scripture. You are, you know, just purposefully bringing that to mind. Um, you know, mindfulness meditation is dwelling or bringing your focus and your attention to what is happening in the present moment, whether it's your breath or sounds you hear in your environment, um, or, you know, a part of your body, you know, we'll talk more about that in future classes. Um, but in general, meditation very simply just means to focus on something. And so, you know, what I always say is that everybody meditates because we all focus on something, right? So it is really simply a question of what are we meditating on? Are we meditating on our anxieties, our fears, um, you know, whatever difficult thoughts are going through our, our, our heads. And that's not to, you know, make anybody feel bad for struggling with those things because we all do. Right. Um, but to think about meditation in the sense of seeking to focus somewhere a little bit different. And sometimes that's on scripture, but sometimes that's just on like what's happening right now and drawing our attention as best as we can away from the pain or the anxiety onto some, something like more neutral, something that helps us calm down. Um, so that is how I would kind of sum it up pretty quickly of what I think it is. So hopefully that answered the question. 
Any other questions or thoughts on that? I just wanted to say I really appreciated the focus on scripture because I think there's a lot of meditation. Um, you know, like you said, there's a lot of apps, there's a lot of things out there to help us practice meditation, but there's not really a lot of scripture meditation out there. So that piece was really unique and really appreciated. Yeah. And that, that is something that is really important for me to bring in, um, is that scripture meditation part of it, because like truly I have learned so much from like the calm app and mindfulness apps. And those really have been how I had practiced and built up my concentration to be able to meditate for longer periods of time and for it to be calming for me. But at the end of the day, like for me, that always has to be a part of it because it is really like where we find our hope. Um, you know, I, that last scripture that I read, you know, I read that partly because for me, that is such a hopeful scripture. And one of the things that I will meditate on is just that concept of light and momentary, you know, so I read that whole passage and it talks about how our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And I just started meditating on the, those three words, light and momentary, light and momentary, uh, not to like downplay my suffering or, you know, downplay what I'm going through, but just as this reminder that at the end of the day, like at the end of the day, this for me, and, and this has just been helpful for me, this might not be helpful for somebody else. I'm just kind of, you know, sharing my experience to meditate on those words as just like an example of something that I've pulled out of a scripture. Um, someone's asking, what is that scripture? It is in Corinthians. And now I'm going to Google it because I forgot the exact um, second Corinthians, second Corinthians four, four. 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, go ahead. It looks like you're about to say something. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I have to, um, the abide app is absolutely amazing every day. Just right up at the top, you can push on it. It's anything from two to five to 10 or 15 minutes. And it's completely um, scripture and they read through it a few times. There's, I, I try to do the 15 and there's time in between. They encourage the breathing and there's time in between to listen to the Holy Spirit and how he's speaking to you through this. And I just can't tell you how powerful that is for me. I've been doing it in the morning and it is, it, it's amazing. Uh, God just seems, sometimes they're like, Eh, this wasn't, you know, this one wasn't for me. I didn't, I didn't like that one. And I also have to say, sometimes the speaker's voice, you have to go, okay, Lord, just let me hear what you're saying, because this voice is bugging me. So, um, yeah, so anyway, yeah. that. That is, a, that is a good app. And yeah, that's definitely some definitely good to be able to share those resources. The other one I use is called Dwell, is another kind of scripture based meditation app. And um, so what I would say is here is, here is what I think would be most helpful. Like if people are interested in continuing to like meet um, and I'm actually gonna put a survey in the chat if people wanna fill it out. It's like four questions wrong, long, I think, um, just to like get people's thoughts on if they're interested in continuing and how often they would wanna meet. But I think what could be really helpful and actually, you know, be, yeah, be helpful for people would be to, for this class to meet either every week or every other week. And then in between, you know, for people to practice some of the skills, to use different apps to practice the skills, for us to come back together, um, maybe spend a little bit of time talking about how meditating went that week, and then to dive into one or two strategies and kind of end. I always want to just like end with that tapping in the scripture reading, because I think it's really helpful. But um, that is kind of what I am, I am thinking right now. I would kind of really love to hear your thoughts in the survey. The survey is just like four questions about like, how long do you think it should be? How often? Stuff like that. Um, it didn't allow me to like put a comment box in to hear your um, like feedback in general. Um, so I, I had to like pay for that feature. So if you have like specific thoughts, please shoot me an email. I'm also going to the chats. If you have like thoughts on what you want the class to look like, again, this is the first class and I'm just kind of in one 
in some ways I'm figuring out as I go in terms of what people want and what's going to be most helpful for them. So shoot me an email if you have ideas of, you know, this is something I would love for us to do in the class. Please send me your thoughts on that. And I would love to hear them. So um, again, anybody who fills out that survey, I'm going to send you a free um, copy of my expressive writing booklets. So please, it's just like a few questions long. And any other thoughts or questions while people fill out that survey? Normally, I will end right on time, but today I am happy to like, you know, field any questions, stay here as long as you need um, to kind of hear some of your thoughts. Nothing else? How do we get the survey? So I put it in, can, can you see the chat section? I put it in the chat and there's a link. You might have to scroll up a little bit at this point. And you can just click on that and hopefully, um, hopefully it will bring you right there. Anybody having problems with it or is it bringing you right there? I'm kind of new to the chat part. Does that stay around like after, um, or do we need to click on it now so it's there? I will. Live? It's going to disappear when we all leave, but I will send out a copy of the survey with the recording, which okay. I will, I'm not sure when I will send that recording out. It will either be today or tomorrow probably, but whenever I send it out, it will be included. Okay, thanks. So, yeah. And the other thing that I will say is that I am, so I, I had quite a few people sign up for this class. I think a lot of them were planning to watch the recording and I want to keep the class somewhat not too big. I don't want to, you know, cut anybody out who really wants to do it, but I don't want the class to be too, too big. So I am going to put a, like a cap on how many people. And then if there's like a bunch more interest, maybe I would do like two classes, but um, this one was, you know, open to unlimited amounts of people. And the next one, there will be some sort of limits on how many people can sign up. So just to keep that in mind. Um, and I will make sure that everybody who came to this class that um, I will make sure you get information on how to sign up for the next class in case you would like to. So, so yeah, thank you for all of your comments. Um, thank you so much everybody for showing up. Any final questions or thoughts before we finish for today? Okay. Well, this was great. Thank you guys so much for coming. I really enjoyed this time with you guys and I look forward to hopefully seeing some of you um, again in the future. I think the next one will probably be next Friday. I don't know if I'm going to do it weekly or not, um, but at least for this next one, just to keep things going, I do plan to do the next one um, next Friday. So stay tuned for information on that. Okay. Everybody get a chance to fill out the survey who wanted to. I will close this out once everybody's no. I still. Oh. I. Still... I'm sorry, you're cutting out. So I wasn't able to hear you. Oh, I. Somehow you went on mute again. I can see you have a question, but. Oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I I still can't find the survey. Okay, I let's see. I will copy and paste it in again right now. Okay, do you see it? I just put it in the chat box. So it should be the first comment there. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Oh, somebody said they had to copy and paste it to complete the survey. So um, keep that in mind. You might have to do that instead of clicking right on that. I know that Zoom, I've had that happen with Zoom before where it can be a little bit strange in that way. So, okay. So if everybody has had a chance to click on the link, it should take you 
right there and still have access to it once we close out. So I will make sure that I, um, um, will next week be a different Zoom link or the same one? It will be a different Zoom link for now. Yeah, a different Zoom link. So I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to schedule it. It's possible in the future it would be the same one, but for next time, it will be a different Zoom link. Did anybody have trouble getting logged in or figuring out how to join the class? No? Okay. Good. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming. And I will hope to see some of you guys um, next week. I'm going to stop the recording now.